All right, so this is going to be part six to what if Asta and Yuno were adopted by Mary and Leona. So with that being said, let's just roll the intro. So it's been a while since I've done a Black Clover What If, and obviously this is going to be a continuation, but if you want me to do other um, What Ifs on this series, tell me down below what What If you want me to do. And yeah, so before we get into the actual story, I want to say a few things. First off, I want to expand my content into other, I guess, genres, and the obvious one was gaming, but... It's not like I want to do let's plays or anything like that. Rather, I want to do things like lists, theories, and maybe general discussions on a video game series. A game that I've been playing recently and a game that you've seen uh, that I've used in like background footage for a bit of my stuff. Like one video so far was Genshin. And I kind of want to talk about that series, what I want to see in the future for that. And... Uh, things like that. So if you're interested in that, you guys can tell me down below. But with that being said, let's actually get into the story. So, in the last part, we just got done with the middle of the attack on the kingdom. And everything that's led up all the way to the part in where Fogolion actually loses his arm. Now, Asta at this point, as well as Leopold, are devastated. Asta was really looking up to Fogolion even more than he did in the manga because he spent months in his team on his squad and they have a closer connection because they see each other as family. Leopold is in denial while Asta can't really shake off this anger that he feels while Noelle's trying to get them to see reason and to calm down as she tends to the wounds but it's not working and Asta in his rage unlocks a new form of his black form now at this point Asta has been using the first black form that you see during the kind of uh, witch forest arc to between the beginning of the tournament arc but this is a higher level of the black form that you see during the elf arc and things like that where he's able to control it a lot more and it gives him a lot more power than before but there's also a caveat to this. If you see in the manga, and this might be a bit of a spoiler, but if you're this far in this series, then I don't think it's that necessary for me to tell you, but it's going to be a spoiler. So if you don't want to see it, then I suggest reading the manga and then coming back. During the... So I'm going to say it right now. So during the fight with Dante, Asta was able to unlock another form due to rage and a deal with the devil. But because of this kind of berserk form, it's going to be like a mix of the second form that Asta gets and this Berserk form. So it's going to be like a medium in between. So Asta at this point unlocks it because of Rage. And he starts fighting the Midnight Sun that's there. Specifically Radies and Valtos. With the use of Key, he's able to find Valtos really easily. And knocks him from the bio bodies. Valtos would use his uh, Spatial Magic to get out of there. And this is where... He would try to get Radies out of there as well. But because is so fast, he nullifies the portal and slams Radies into a building. Or basically knocking him out. As this is happening, the rest of the Midnight Sun come. Now, they have a bunch of different magics here. And Asta, at this point, is not really seeing much sense. He is nearly like a wild animal. And because of this, he starts going to the highest mana sources there. Which... That collectively would be the Midnight Sun. And he tries to slash them. Which hits most of them. Sally would try to use her. Sticky Salamander. This would obviously not work. And just be nullified. After that. She would try it again. But this time she would try to dodge. The slicing. By making the 
by making the sticky salamander basically come apart right when Asta is about to slice it and then give it a property boost and where it would make it a lot tougher. Asta at this point is getting even angrier because he can't even slice the sticky salamander because of how it's moving. And this is when he unlocks a new spell, that being Black Divider. This basically makes his Demon Slayer sword sharp like it used to be, or sharper than it was. And it also makes it extremely long enough anti magic. This gives him enough range to basically destroy the sticky salamander. And he is basically going on a rampage at this point, taking out the Midnight Sun. It's only until this is when the captains actually come, the captains as well as the rest of the different squads. Because if you don't remember, they were teleported out of the city. Asta is bloodthirsty at this point and isn't really seeing sense, like I said before. As he notices the extreme amount of magic, after taking out the Midnight Suns, he turns onto the captains. This is when Nozel tries to attack Asta. Asta is able to reflect it with his anti-magic and this is where Mimosa as well as Noel and Leopold try to get some sense into Asta but it's not really working and the captains think that they're gonna have to end Asta or at least put him out of uh basically try to knock him out or to kill him because right now he's attacking the captains and that's not something you should do eventually they are able to restrain him using a combination of Charlotte's Briar magic and Nozelle's Mercury magic to pin him down. With him not being able to use his sword and restricting his arm so he can't take out another, there isn't much he can do. Nozelle looks disgusted as he sees Asta in this state. He was already not really sold on the idea of these people being, these people that being, you know, and Asta being royals, but he could tell how much power there is behind Asta and that it took two captains to take him down. This is where Licht or Patri looks through a magic device and he's able to see that the Midnight Sun basically failed and he needs to take him back. So with the help of Raya, he uses his copy spatial magic to get in there and basically blind everyone at the same time shooting magic at them. That being his kind of light blades, he's able to hit Charlotte which causes the briar magic to dissipate off of Asta because it was a binding spell and she needed to focus on that. This lets him escape and continue his rampage. He goes to the strongest mana source and that's going to be Licked slash Partry. Before he can actually hit Lick, this is when Raya uses one of Lick's spells that being the light whip trying to deflect Asta's attack but it doesn't work and cuts through hitting Raya, slamming him to the ground. Licht is appalled by this and starts using his light magic to shoot Asta. It eventually does, as Asta at this point is not fast enough to hit all the projectiles that hit him, so it ends up hitting him in the shoulder, pinning him down onto the ground. He lets out a agonizing scream that's very animalistic, and this is where Licked plans on finishing Asta as he notices what grimoire he has. Before he could do so, the Wizard King comes in and shoots Partry in the arm, causing it to age rapidly. And the reason why this happens is because Partry was fast enough to react to the Wizard King even though it was a sneak attack. He gets Raya to use the spatial magic to get the Eye of the Midnight Sun, but before he does so, the Wizard King is able to capture a few members. After this, the Wizard King uses Chronostasis to put Asta in a bubble to calm him down. And after that, Fregolion is taken to the royal capital, the central part of it, where Owen, basically the uh, top like healing mage, is there to heal Fregolion. At this point, Fregolion is in that kind of coma-like state that you see at that part of the series. Eventually, Asta is able to calm down and he doesn't really remember much of what happened only snippets of how he was in a blind rage and he was just fighting anyone with a high amount of magic Nozel's there to talk to Asta although they are I guess first cousins removed I believe or second I forgot exactly how that works but basically 
is the same relationship that he has with no Noel. And Nozel understands that Asta was only did that because of what happened to Frigolion. And he tells him that I understand you're angry, but at this point we have to do as much as we can to stop the Midnight Sun and to avenge Frigolion. You have a lot of power and I see that. Although you're not a royal by blood, I could tell that you have your own ways of fighting and I could tell that you're strong. And if you're able to control whatever you saw today, we will be able to avenge Frigolion. And that's all he says and he leaves. This is when Yuno also walks into the room and seeing that Frigolion is well in a comatose state. Now Yuno wasn't as close to him as Asta because them being on different squads, meaning he wasn't able to see him as often as he could have, but he still has that relationship with him. And this saddens Yuno. It really gives a kind of pit in his stomach when he sees this. He's pushing back the feeling of crying and doesn't want to do so, especially in front of Asta. He may have been a crybaby once in his life, but he doesn't want to show it to Asta now. Asta at this point sheds a few tears, gritting his teeth as he sees his uncle on death's bed almost. And as this is happening, this is when Fregolion's sister, Mario Leona, comes in. Their adopted mother comes in yelling. She tells him, what are you two doing here? Crying. Fregolion got himself into this mess because he was dumb. He was stupid. He was arrogant. He underestimated the enemy. And because of that, he's in a coma. And hearing this, both of them are shocked. And Asa's angry. And he tells her, like, how can you say that to your own brother? Fregolion was a great man. And you're just going to say that to him when he's in this state? And Mario Leona tells Asa, like, what are you going to do about it? And Asta just stands there, clenching his fist, not knowing what to say. And then he finally looks up to her and tells her that he's going to avenge Forgolion. He's going to go after the Midnight Sun. And this is when Yuno joins him. He says he's going to do the same. And that he was going to be the one who avenged Forgolion, not Asta. And Mary Elena smiles. Well, good. Because starting today, I'm going to be the captain of the Crimson Lion Kings. So this is where she's basically pronounced as the captain and after that this is where we get into the next arc so the next arc with basically the town and the black bulls versus the midnight sun i forgot the exact name of the arc but that's gonna be a lot different as with austin not being the black bulls he wouldn't go to the mixer and therefore wouldn't have a reason to go to that town but because of Mario Leona being the captain now, I feel like it'd be a good opportunity for her to introduce Asta to the nun who is both the teacher of Mario Leona and Fregolion. This would give him a good experience to see from an actual veteran how it is to be a captain or how it is to be a magic knight. So with that being said, and this is where I'm in the video, I know it's a short part, but I'm going to do a following part soon after this. So we got to do the Patreon shoutouts before we end the video. So if you want to join the Patreon and get my videos early, you could do so by going to patreon.com slash comic sans the man, or you could click the link in the description. There you get my videos early and you have a chance to get a drawing from me. And the higher your tier is, the better chance you have. So let's get on to the patrons. So, in our gold tier, we have Dwayne Fenn and Lyco. So, you can go down in the description and join them there. And, yeah, with that being said, this is going to be the video. So, yeah.